Good morning, South Rock. I am glad to be with you today, and we have a larger text, verses 13 through 52 of chapter 13. And so hopefully you've read that already, because I just want to point out a couple things. The first is not even a full sentence, um, but at the end of verse 13, it says, where John left them to return to Jerusalem. You know what? John Mark leaves uh, Saul and Barnabas, and there's some differing opinions as to why, but what you really need to know is in a couple of chapters, there's going to be a pretty big disagreement about Mark, and should they bring him again, and it all stems from this right here. So again, I just wanted to point that out because it's something that maybe you skim over and don't realize that it's a big deal later on. The second thing I want to point out is that when I read the words here, I see that Paul and Barnabas, they give a good gospel presentation. They say, this is what the scripture has pointed towards, and here is who Jesus is. And it kind of makes me think back to Acts chapter 7, when Stephen was on trial, and he gave a pretty good gospel message of the Old Testament pointing up to what Jesus had come to do. And it's just a good reminder to me that I need to make sure that I know God's story to be able to share it with people. You know, another thing that jumps out to me is that after Paul and Barnabas have shared this, the next week it talks about how, you know, almost the whole uh, city comes and gathers to hear this. Like they're excited. The gospel message has power. It has life and people are hungry for it. And so these people come to listen, you know, but not everyone is appreciative of it. And you read people, read about people who are ready to, to get rid of Paul and Barnabas and they actually do so. And in, even at that, you read that they had joy even in their rejection. And so as I read this and I just think about a couple things, I think number one, it is important to know what your testimony is, like what God has done in your life. So you can share that with people because people can't argue with what God has done in you. But I also think sometimes today we've gotten rid of the it's important to know God's story too. Like we need to know the history. We need to know what God has done in the past to bring us to this point. And so maybe today you should just kind of make an outline. If someone were to ask you, what would you quickly tell them that God has done like since the beginning of the world? And so again, I know there's a lot of stuff that's happened since then. So you got to kind of whittle it down. But do you have a good summary of what God has done throughout history to then add to your testimony? The other thing I would point out is that even as you share that testimony and that history, not everyone is going to receive it well, but that's not your responsibility. We still need to give it in grace and with mercy and in love, but ultimately their hearts have to be receptive to it. It is just our responsibility to share the good news. So today, think about that. Think about God's story all the way up into your life, and maybe today you have the chance to share your testimony with someone and be filled with joy no matter the response. Have a great day.